Guys, today the topic is beige theorem. Base, bias, beige, Bayesian, whatever it is, okay? This is so important lecture, so please, please be very careful, okay? Are you ready right now? If you're not ready, I'm not going to start the video, okay? Are you ready or not? Okay, you're ready. Okay, let's go. Okay, what is the Bayes theorem? So, first of all, let's make an experiment with you. Think about a dis disease, okay? A disease that occurs only one in a thousand people. Okay, a disease occurs in only one person in a thousand person in society. Okay, and we developed a test kit for that disease. Okay, we want to help to the people, to society, because we love people. Okay, we love to work. So we worked a lot and we created, created a test kit. These are the metrics, the... Uh, accuracy matrix of the test kit. Let me show it to you. What is true positive? True positive, if a person is a sick, then the your test kit's probability to give positive for that is 100%. Did you see the accuracy? <laughs> incredible, incredible, right? I mean, think about a person, thousand people, thousand sick people, okay? thousand sick people and we given a test all of them our test new test and all thousand tests are given positive so hundred percent that's okay what is a false positive rate false positive rate is 100 metric that we're gonna measure for our test kit think about a thousand healthy people this time okay thousand healthy people and we give our test to them only five of the thousand tests falsely given positive. All other 995 test kits results are what? Negative. But five out of a thousand is false, false, false positive. That, that, that what false positive mean, by the way, okay? That's really important. It, our test gives wrongly positive, but the person is not actually Okay, these are the metrics of our test kit. True positive, 100%. False positive, only 5 out of a 1,000. Okay? And a disease occurs 1 in 1,000 people in society. So the question is this. All the tests are done. Okay? We produced our product and we distributed it. Okay? It's on the market now. And somebody came. Somebody came and we don't know whether he or she is sick or healthy. And we made a test. The result of test is positive. What is the probability that the person is actually sick? That's very important. Harvard Medical School students that did this experiment may uh, has been made in like 1970s in Harvard Medical School, some experts answered it is 95%. Some, but the average answer was 55%. It's, uh, these are the these are all the results from such a good school. What is the correct result? Correct result is only 17%. It's incredible, right? It's incredible. How how can how can it be? True positive is 100%. False positive is only 5 out of 1,000. How can this probability can be such a low amount? That sounds incredible, right? By the way, I assume that you already know the conditional probability. That's really important. For example, this true positive rate, we this the, the right side of the conditional probability is the information that we already know. For example, this one. The 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 test positive probability given the person is sick. That's hundred percent. We know that thousand people, for example, we know that thousand people are sick, and we make we already know that information that thousand people are sick, and then we are uh getting our probability that our test kit will give a 
positive result or not. That's the probability of that. Okay, so I assume I'm not going to go into details. I assume that you already know the conditional probability, which is not that hard. So how did we get 17%? Such a good test kit. I mean, uh, it seems such a good test kit, but this is really incredible, unbelievable person. Because what do you know what does this mean? This mean, think about 100 people who tested positive okay 100 people that we, that we do not know whether they are sick or healthy but we made a test with this test test kit and they their test results were positive we know that how many of them is actually how many of them are actually sick only 17 of them are actually sick this is incredible. So let's see what is a Bayesian theorem because all this, all these weird results coming from the guy <laughs> whose name is Bias. Bias. Bayesian theorem. What is it? What is it? Everybody ask about it. We all need to know about it, right? Okay. The Bayesian theorem is this, guys. Okay. We write a conditional probability a given b like this we can reverse the condition okay if we are asked the probability of a given b we can just convert it to the, this formula which is b given a which is something different right b given a for example the 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 point here, for example, we were given that the person is sick and then we uh, measured the probability of the test positive. But we are asked what? The right opposite of it. In the question, we are given that the test is positive, but we this time we don't know the person is sick or not. So these are two different things. So in the Bayesian theorem, we can convert them to each other. That's the case. So if we are asked the probability of A given B, we can convert it to the probability of B given A times probability of A itself. That's really important because that's the condition. That's the condition. I'm just trying to give the intuition behind it. Because if we are given A, we need to put that in our formula. Formula, uh, the, 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 the probability of that condition itself. That's the thing. And our denominator is the probability of B. That's another issue because this looks easy, but actually we generally do not know it directly. Okay. That's why I write, I've written here. Generally, we will think the probability of B in terms of its components. Okay. Pro we generally can't know the direct probability of, I mean, the probability of directly specifically b but we can take its components b can be given a1 a2 and a3 for example and we can calculate them all i'm going to talk about it for our specific example by the way where this bayesian theorem comes from it's just a fancy word bayesian theorem but it's actually coming from this uh two simple formulas we know that the, the basic probability theory that the the, com the probability of a combination of two different uh outcomes can be written like this either in this way or in this way we can write that probability of a given b times the condition probability of b or we can write it probability of b given a times our condition probability of a okay when you just play on these formulas you can actually easily get this bayesian theorem so let's come to our example what we are asked what we are asked is the probability of the person is sick or not the, the, the probability of the person is sick given test is positive we know this information we know this information that the test is positive. So let's put it on the Bayesian theorem. So we can write it probability of test positive given sick times probability of sick by probability of test positive itself. So what is the probability of our test to be positive? We don't know. What are we going to do? We don't know this. 
We know this one, right? We are given this one. We are given this one too. I'm going to talk about it. So how are we going to handle this? So be careful about this. Just to, after, after just uh, solving a couple of Bayesian theorem, you're going to really uh, get familiar with this uh, idea, this concept, okay? Because this looks easy, PB, right? Just the two letters. <laughs> but actually, you need to use this summation thing. And that's not that hard, actually, we're going to see now. Okay, now, let's see. We don't know the test positive probability directly but we know something else we know the pro uh the probability of test positive given sick and the probability of test positive given healthy is there an other way guys is there an other way for a person to be a sick person or to be a healthy person no right that's the the total is one the person can only be sick or healthy that's it that's it. So I can decompose my probability of test positive into these two idea. So a test can be positive in the condition of the person is sick or in the condition of the person is healthy. That's it. So if I sum them together, I can directly get the prob probability of test positive. That's the idea behind it. Okay. So probability of test positive times uh, sorry, the probability of test positive given the person is sick times the person is sick. Don't forget this because if we are taking this condition, we need to put that in the formula. We need to put that probability of that condition itself. Same story is available here too. Okay, the probability of test positive given the person is healthy times probability of the person is healthy. These are the two components that uh, exclusively creates the the whole test positive probability. Okay, let's write them. I'm gonna uh, when we are seeing the uh, values, we will understand it easily. So, what is this? Why this is the hundred percent? Because the we already know that these are given. Remember, remember, these are given. So, the the probability of test positive given sick was 100%. So that's why this is 100%, right? Remember our formula here, probability of test positive given sick is 100%. What is the probability of sick? Probability of sick is one out of a thousand people. Remember, the disease uh, the disease that occurs one in thousand people in society. That's the information that we are given. So this is really important. Yeah, let, let me talk about it in, uh, just a couple minutes later because all this guy has uh, has their specific names actually. Okay, let's look at here. This is the first part of our probability of test positive. If you can realize this is the same of the nominator. Look at the only this first part. Okay. This is the second part. Can you realize that this one out of ten, uh, one out of thousand, and this is the nine hundred and ninety-nine out of thousand? What are the summation of them? One. Could you see the idea over there? So, the sickness is one out of thousand. The healthy, the probability of healthy is nine hundred and ninety-nine thousand. So simply, I redefine my probability of test positive by using these two components which which uh, which actually uh, which actually shape the whole uh, probability world right the person can only be healthy or can only be sick so what is the probability of test positive given sick is 100% we know that like I said before, this is exactly same with the denominator, but we also have one another condition. What if people healthy? What if people healthy, but our test gives us positive? This is the probability here. It was five out of thousand. When we calculate this, we can clearly see that it's seventeen percent. So, what is the intuition behind it? Where 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 this is coming from? 
where this is coming from this is coming from guys the trick here the probability of sickness is one out of thousand people so it's so so rare so because of the sickness is so rare in society even these uh, relatively small errors in our tests can cause big uh, problems at the end of the day that's the intuition behind it. I mean if I if I had made here like one out of two that's really huge number right one in every two person is sick if I had made like that it wouldn't be totally different but this is one out of thousand is really small uh, value that makes things harder so let me write that actually these are the really important because in the the, the future that's going to be really important if you especially if you're going to uh, study on machine learning or, or uh, data stuff this is Upper ear. This is a posterior. This is likelihood, which is totally different than probability. You can uh, Google it. That's I'm not gonna go into detail. But the important thing is a prior. Prior. Yeah, I'm, I'm pronouncing wrong. A prior knowledge. This is the a prior knowledge that makes everything harder. Our a prior knowledge, the knowledge that we are given is the probability of sickness, which is one out of thousand. That's really important. So this information that we are given, a prior information, uh, is really game changer here. Okay, this was the Bayesian theorem with a one interesting uh, example. All right. Thank you for watching. Thumbs up. And please correct my especially English grammar mistake. Or if you have any uh, recommendation about the synonym words or other stuff, you can just offer me. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to develop my English by doing some education video or some other vlog videos, etc. All right. Thank you. See you in the next video.